Hello everybody and welcome to another Morph Bag Wellness Wednesday. To introduce myself, I'm Giovanna Sassinot, I'm the creative director of the Morph Bag and I'm running the Wellness Wednesdays really to remind ourselves that if we lead a balanced lifestyle and uh, look after our spiritual, emotional and physical health, we not only contribute to our own sustainable lifestyle but we also Con contribute towards a sustainable environment and during the wellness Wednesdays I invite uh, women who are empowered by their own actions in order to live a sustainable lifestyle or women who are about to embark change in order to make their lifestyle more sustainable and I'm introducing to the Morphback community people who can give us tools in order to help us to achieve this sustainable lifestyle. And today with me, I've got Sveta Longley. And uh, let me see if I can get her to join. Okay, um, she joined, it says. Can you see me, Sveta? Let's see. Okay, invite. Here, any second now, please accept the invite. Okay, go live. Okay, sorry guys. Hello, oh, there she is. Okay, I got you. Now I've got. Uh, can I get? Okay, now I can see you well. Great. Hi. Thank Hi. you very much for joining us on uh, Wellness Wednesday with the Morph Bag. Thank you for inviting me. It's an absolute pleasure to have this conversation <laughs> with you. Yeah, good, good. Despite the nice weather out there. I know. It doesn't <laughs> happen often, does it? But hey. No, it doesn't happen often. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for coming. So, uh, Sveta, um, you are a holistic health coach in the making. Yeah. And you have an interesting background totally different to what you're doing right now and so i would love you to please introduce yourself with uh, the way you feel is most appropriate absolutely well i'm an ex-corporate consultant uh who left the corporate world to become an entrepreneur and now a holistic coach in training and um yeah that's something that i through the journey that I've gone through the career, corporate career and entrepreneurship, it's something that I knew that was a next logical step for me. Okay, so this is jump. what in our, sorry, this is what in our terms or in, in the morph back terms we would call a morph moment is when we are, we're living in a certain way and we then have a eureka moment, a morph moment that tells us, no, actually, this is not the way I want to continue. My life is too precious. It's not sustainable the way it is. I want to have a change, make a change. So what, what was that morph moment you had? What instigated your wish to move from the safety of a corporate job to um, something as inspirational um, and, and giving as a holistic coach? Well, it was a journey, right? It hasn't happened in a day. It has been a journey of six years. So initially it was really not a choice uh, because it was prompted by my health struggles. Okay. So otherwise I probably wouldn't quit. Uh, but that was something that made me and I decided that that's the prompt that I'll take and that's my exit. And the next um, sort of mo moment was when I took it from having been in business, having had different businesses in different spheres that initially related to what I did in the corporate world, then it evolved as I was learning how to uh, become healthier um, and then logically it led me to really become a health coach. And the biggest thing here, I would say, is the combination of me really finally understanding my strengths. You know, often uh, going through the corporate world, being a certain type of uh, professional, we often have a certain way of how we should be 
right? Um, yeah. And sort of like suppressing your natural tendency at some point comes at a bigger cost. And so while I was doing, uh, having that moment of what's next, I was doing different uh, personality tests. And okay. Yeah, I discovered that my natural tendency is care. My natural tendency is um, investing and looking and developing genuine relationships. And so I looked into it, what could it look like in terms of a career going forward? Well, that's interesting. But um, so I understand that you you came up with this idea because you had health issues, right? Um, so you wanted to address those, but what exactly, you know, I mean, obviously health and sustainability means something important to you because this is, you knew exactly what tools you needed to take in order to improve your, your, the way you were feeling. But can you go a little bit in detail in what actions you've actually taken in order to get yourself out of, this malaise that you were experiencing into a, a, a more healthy and sustainable lifestyle? I think uh, one of the biggest shifts for me was that we know, we ultimately know what we need to do. Uh, environment shapes us to tell us uh, what's best, what we should do, how we should go about our health, our careers. And as I was going on that journey and constantly taking the shoots that I should do this, either for my health, either for my business, I realized that it's not fitting me. And initially it started more, started more from questioning, you know, am I good enough? Am I this? Am I that? But then realizing, and that's something that I really appreciated about the studies that I'm doing currently at Integrative uh, Institute of Integrative Nutrition, where, to, where they talk about bio-individuality. So while I didn't know that during the journey, I took a sort of like intuitive steps towards throwing out all the stuff out of the house, going a much more minimalistic, just coming back to nature sort of, right, uh, lifestyle. Now, having been a student, and one of the core concepts that they talk about is bio-individuality. We all unique, and what works for you probably or can be a poison for me. And when you take it and apply in that concept into any area of your life, that is your answer, really. And you, so you're saying, if I understand you correctly, that the diagnosis happens with our own instinct? Exactly. We, okay. we intuitively know what we need to do. And that is where, um, uh, where we need to be open to unlearn the things that we gained on the way, you know, whether, you know, we're told what we should eat, what we shouldn't eat, what's good, what's bad, whether it's protein, no protein, you know, and we, we gain that experience and then we end up in a little bit of a mess like I was sort of like so what you know I have so much uh, information education and experience but what do I do with that it was feeling like I couldn't fit it onto myself and but when you come back to your your values your strengths and align yourself with that that's when it's easier to move forward yeah, I find it really interesting because as you were talking, something pops to mind of my own experience about this instinct of self-diagnosis. When I was pregnant with my son, only with my son, actually, I mean, with my daughter, I didn't have these problems, but with my son, I, I, had, I was cr craving uh, iron-rich um, foods, mm -hmm. like crazy, like tons. And, and then I had a blood test done and it turned out that I was iron deficient. So I had all these crazy cravings, right? Um, and, um, and that it was, right? It was exactly what I was deficient of. Another example I can tell you, I'm uh, vitamin D deficient. And how I found out, oh no, sorry, somebody's at the door. How I found, uh, how I found out was basically because I've always been desperate to be in the sunshine. 
as soon as the sun's out, I need to be outside. Well, why? Because my body is requesting I need to have vitamin D. Yeah. So, yeah, so these are just two examples, so, but uh, it is very true. But and when you are a holistic um, health coach, apologies for my dog. <laughs> yeah, it's the health coach. It's life, How right? Do you, yeah. How do you actually, do you coach people to find uh, to how to, they can actually tune into their instincts because not everybody is so self-aware to know exactly what's wrong with them um, well there's nothing wrong with them right <laughs> but um, as I embark on this journey I'm still sort of discovering uh, what path would I take um, in terms of how I would support um, people in wellness uh, because there are different paths um, how you can do it, whether one-to-one, -one, whether community-based, you know, and um, currently I have not had like a coaching client because I am a student and I would say the main client at the moment is myself. I go through all of the <clears throat> experiences, all of the exercises and all of the support I provide to myself and that's ultimately what I believe in we all need to start from ourselves right that's where the self-care ties in that's where everything comes from once you are centered you know what you value and I know your community is all around values as well you align and actually happy with yourself therefore going forward in a healthier way is much easier because it's often not the health as we think about it. I mean, health, physical health, but it, it has to do a lot with the environment that we are in as well. Did I answer your question? I think I- Yes, I you did answer my question. <laughs> but um, if we're talking now, so we talked a bit about um, the sustainable lifestyle and reaching that, that, that balance that we need and crave for to, to feel happy and to feel well and healthy and, uh, be forever young mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh um how did you actually find it if we go by you know, the motions of you know, being a professional in a corporate world and then moving into this holistic um uh in, in approach what how did you actually get the the strength to make that leap from the safety into into something that you were I mean, I can't say experimenting in, but some, something you needed to to acquire skills in um, to make it a new profession. Yeah, I would say a, a lot of it has to do with your environment around you. Um, and together with my husband, we were on the same page. So oh, okay. it, was, it was much easier to make that leap and say, right, I'm... And, Again, my journey was not, I didn't know what I'm going into. At, at the time I, when I quit my corporate job, I just wanted to quit. And then there was like, okay, we'll see what happens. For now, it's just health. And so for a year, it was all about health. And then I started looking into really the way I live, the products I use, and I really discovered, I don't know, I was blind to a lot of things, uh, what we use on a daily basis, whether it's in the house, in your body, or on your body. And I started specializing in plant-based beauty, something that I'm passionate about, and something that little by little started educating me about sustainability, different way of business, different way of work, life. And ultimately, that's how I met Roberta, that's how I met you, uh, people that were around the values of which we're trying to take forward, right? The sustainability, uh, living in a different way, basically. And I think those like puzzles came together one puzzle at a time. And I'm still putting it together. Mm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very keen to find out, if you're willing to share so, what your daily routine looks like in terms of everything, you know, whether it is beauty to uh, physical activity to, as Roberta is asking now, uh, nutritional options. So what do you do for your nutrition that you think benefits you? And, um, and yeah, so, you know, let's take this holistic approach and please give us some examples 
on what you do? So my focus, as you know, is longevity and really going and exploring how we can live longer, healthier, because new science already says that we are living longer, but the question is whether healthier, right? And so that's my sort of new mission of sharing that new science and new findings in a way of how we can live healthier longer. And as talking about nutrition, one of the things that I do in my daily routine, I actually fast. I eat only once a day. Uh, I mean, it, it might sound crazy, I know. I didn't start. No, it yet. sounds impressive. I did, yeah, I didn't start here. Um, I initially moved plant-based and then I experimented, but then we found that actually fasting is an amazing way to feel good, look good, uh, save time, and also increase quality and keep your quality within the budget. Because if we're talking about sustainability and living a sustainable life, I mean, that's quite pricey, whether if you want to do it in every area of your life. So I really believe going beyond age as we know it, we need to do it with less, whether it's less calories, less consumption, you know, less uh, purchasing in the way that we knew that before. So that's one of, one of the key pillars of my routine. Uh, but if you look at it at, on a daily basis, I've... I've reinvented it because I've never used to go to sleep early. I never used to wake up early. So I put those pillars into place that actually coincide with living healthier longer. That's, you know, having a proper sleeping routine, waking up earlier, exercising. I do face yoga, body yoga, and drink, you know, lemon water in the morning and then get to work and exercise as well. So it's like, it's the basics that we all know about, but we don't often follow it. And that meal that you have, the one meal you have a day, do you try to eat all your uh, metabolic uh, calorific uh, um, needs in, in that one meal? And where do you, when do you consume that meal? Because, you know, there are some people, as you say, we're all individuals. Some people can, uh, are useless in the morning unless they eat something or, or drink a coffee. Um, some people, if they go to bed without food, they have the stomach rumbling all night and keeping them awake. Some people get reflux and hence they cannot eat at night. Right? So we're all individuals, right? So what, uh, when do you consume your meal? I do it during the lunchtime at 12. So we usually do it as a window from 12 to 4. Some, what we started doing now is that we fast 24 hours every week. And then on a daily basis, we just fast and eat once a day. Uh, sometimes, and I, because it's the lifestyle, right? We approach it with flexibility. It's not like, no. <laughs> sometimes we do have cravings. Sometimes we go out. But again, because it's lifestyle, I know tomorrow, I'm just going to have lunch. And if it's not going to work out, I'll get back on it tomorrow or the day after, you know. So it's a lot of in in experimentation because even with my husband and I, we react to certain things differently. And it took a little bit of time for both of us to find what works for us. And that's what I ultimately recommend to everybody. Listen to yourself, trust yourself, experiment, and then take what works and throw out what doesn't. Wow, oh, that's um, that's quite revolutionary for me. I don't know whether I could handle this um, to to eat just once a day, but uh, it is something that um, has been out there. That uh, there's a lot of science that proves that if, if you actually fast, maybe not 24 hours, but uh, if you take a um, a gap from 12 to 16 hours, it it has some uh, benefits to to the way we operate. I I'm not so sure what the benefits are in, in a scientifically uh, proven one. I think something has to do with the insulin, um, that we don't stimulate the production of insulin constantly so, throughout the day by eating. Generally, I mean, if you think about, would you personally work 24-7? 
would you? Well, as an entrepreneur, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm getting close to those hours. <laughs> but let's say, would you work 24-7 no, every no, day for the rest of your life? So, and that's the idea no. around fasting. Give your yeah. body a break. And that's and that what allows your body to regenerate in the way from within. And for everybody, it means different things. Um, yes. But that's that break that gives you the most. I've experienced really just an extraordinary effects in not only the way I look, the energy, and you you don't really want that much food anymore but what also important is that for me personally again thinking about sustainability right if we all start fasting or reducing our calories right we're taking the plant-based approach onto a new level right? yes <laughs> that is you know it's not only allows us to live longer healthier but also sustainably which to me, just an incredible way. Absolutely. And this is exactly what I always say with, with the more fact that we believe in leading a sustainable lifestyle, creating that balance, you know, on a spiritual, emotional and physical yeah. level. And physical, we mean not only just exercise, but also nutrition. And when you do that, you not only become a more balanced being and and taking advantage of well-being for yourself you also indirectly contribute to sustainability which a lot of people don't know are perplexed how i'm going to be, become more sustainable because they think they will have to sacrifice something or give up some habits that they have and change their lifestyle and making it more more complicated but it's not the case it's actually the other way around it is totally beneficial if we are leading a more sustainable lifestyle yeah, there's so, something I wanted to add to what you said, because we often talk about nutrition, right? But really, health is not nutrition first. And that's something, again, I've learned recently that nutrition is your secondary food. But your career, your relationships, your spirituality, your exercise is your primary food. And so if you have those in balance, then you don't need to eat as much because usually we, whatever we are missing in our life, that's what we try to fill in with food, right? Yes. But if, we, if we are to look at it as a, you know, holistic whole life, then, I mean, it, it's a totally different picture, right? Mm, yeah, absolutely. So how can people actually get a bit of your wisdom if they're interested in, in what you say, your approach, to find this talk inspirational? Um, how can they reach out to you to learn more? They can follow me on my Instagram and subscribe me and su subscribe to my newsletter beyond where i share exactly all of those new findings research and it's a combination really it's a combination of or combinations of my personal experience what i'm learning as i'm going through the studies and also what i've researched sort of i try to put the best uh, resources into one newsletter to make it easier for my audience. So I would be looking forward to see you all guys reading my newsletter. <laughs> well, I have uh, signed up and I'm really excited about finding out more. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll receive, yeah. You will receive when your first, uh, my first edition actually today. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. great timing. So, guys, please sign up today so you don't miss out. Um, and um, they can find you on your Instagram, Sveta Longley, and yes. uh, there is a link. Yes. And on the link, then there is a pop-up box, and then you can put in all your details and uh, click go, and uh, you'll sign up. And then you just wait, and you'll receive. Anyways, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And uh, all the best. Thank you for the future in your in your quest to Thank become you. even more sustainable and um yeah and i shall follow you uh, with your newsletter and get I some good tips out of you, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah
<laughs> okay, so thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Have a great day. Enjoy the sunshine. Go out for a walk if you can. Even if you can't, just take a break. It's amazing what uh, a bit of fresh air can do for your mindset and your creativity. And with that, love you and leave you. Bye.